At Native Maine, we work with over 88 local farms and producers across the state. It's such an honor to be able to work with such amazing farmers and manufacturers. We really value our partnership with Native Maine. They're just a great group of people to work with. When you buy from a local business, that local business owner is using that money to pay local people to work and then go out into the community and spend those dollars. Native Maine can do that for us and we can focus on growing the food. We're the pros at growing the mushrooms and Native Maine are the pros at distributing them. Hi everyone and welcome to the seaweed episode of Plate the State. I'm here with my friend Ruben and his mom and dad own the Street Eats food cart in Bridgeton. Now you don't normally associate Bridgeton with seaweed, but I have to tell you we were here for Maine Seaweed Week and we had this dish that Chef Jeremy is going to be showing you and it is incredible. It uses a lot of different Maine seaweeds and it is so delicious and it's definitely worth the drive and their food truck is always located at Mountain Range Golf right on 302 in Bridgeton and they're doing so many awesome things. They're going to be doing a beer garden and an outdoor patio and it's so worth the drive with your friends and family and come enjoy. You might be able to even meet Ruben. <laughs> now let's go see what Jeremy and Megan are up to in the food truck. We're recruited here to basically bring some new interesting food to Bridgeton. We're foodies and we love it here and we're kind of trying to help spread the food scene a little bit more north of Portland. Coming here and being on a driving range to hit a bucket of balls, outstanding way to start your day and to finish it and to break in the middle. It's really an amazing, amazing life to just cook on the food truck and hit some balls and make people happy. Seeing people's reactions to my food is like the biggest gift of all. Like working in open kitchens and being in a food truck, just seeing their reactions to their first bite of food. Oh, that is so good. Is the most rewarding thing for me. Having my, my life partner with me every day, it's amazing. Like we never thought that we would be able to do that. I'm his sous chef, I'm his partner. Um, they do social media for the most part and I get to be his personal photographer. <laughs> People ask, you know, what do you recommend? I recommend everything on the menu. We use all local ingredients. We try to, you know, utilize local, local farms and local purveyors as much as we can. It really is food with a view, um, and it's, you can't beat the sunsets every night. They're incredible. On today's episode, we'll be doing a kombu encrusted tuna tataki with a yuzu kosho kelp puree, some kelp caviar, a little sea bean and edamame slaw. So these are our ingredients for the dish. We have some edamame, some chiffonade radicchio, some pea shoots, some pickled red onions, and a little chive and sea bean. This is uh, some red cabbage pickled lotus root and some baby bok choy. This is my kombu togarashi crust. It's just a uh, chili and dried main seaweed. This is my ahi tuna. I'm gonna crust it in the kombu togarashi. Just patting it down all four sides, making sure that everything is evenly dispersed. So I'm gonna ladle a little butter and oil onto the flat top. Gonna sear it for 15 seconds on each four sides. Grab a little scallion, little mung bean sprout, little mint, little cilantro. Grab a little bit of this radicchio, a little pickled red, a little sea bean and scallion, some pea shoot. I'm gonna dress this with a little fish sauce, lime juice, yuzu juice, garlic, and ginger. This is searing up nicely. Now I'm gonna sauce the plate. Honey wasabi yogurt. This is my yuzu kosho kelp puree. Let the tuna rest for about five minutes. So the tuna's rested now. 
You want to make sure your knife is completely sharp. Gently let the blade go through the tuna on its own. About a quarter of an inch thick. You just want to let the knife do the work. So now I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of edamame over the top of the slaw. So now I've taken the tuna over to the box and um, laid it over the top of the, the edamame sea bean slaw. Just slightly separated so you can see the nice flesh of the tuna. This is some of the kelp caviar that I'm going to place on top of the tuna. Kind of spread it over the top here. So now I'm just going to garnish this tuna dish with a little bit of this red cabbage pickled lotus root. It's so beautiful and it makes the tuna pop. And here you have it, your kombu encrusted tuna tataki for seaweed week.